So ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to talk about now is something that you've heard a lot repeated in debate after debate after debate in this park. And the debate is simply, and the, the issue is this, we Christians read the Bible using a covenant system. This covenant system is something that is essential to how Christians read the Bible. And it is something that Muslims ignore whenever they attack the Bible. Because they quote passages from the Old Testament that ignore the uh, covenant paradigm system. So if we could read the first one, Genesis 12, 15. Now, the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you I will curse. Okay. Also try and project your voice. Sure. Now, chapter 15. Okay. So what we heard there was that in Genesis 12, God makes an agreement with Abraham. And the agreement is that God will leave the land of his birth and go to another land. There is another land that Abraham will go to and God will establish Abraham as a great nation. So this is a covenant that is being made with Abraham. It's called the Abrahamic covenant. And we read in Genesis 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Fear not, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. But Abraham said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said, this man shall not be your heir, your very own son will be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and, num and number the stars if you are able to number them. And then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord and it was counted to him as righteousness. So an, a promise is given to Abraham, a promise is given to Abraham that is unconditional. That is unconditional that it will come through his son. His son is the, the, the heir of this covenant and that his seed, those who are called his children, will be as numerous as the stars. Uncountable is the promise. And we see this as we're going to see is fulfilled in the new covenant by faith, by those who are grafted onto the branch of Israel. But what we see here is that God is establishing a covenant with Abraham and he qualifies this covenant in Deuteronomy chapters 28 to chapters 30. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all of his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, and the increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket, and blessed shall be your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you go in, and blessed shall you be when you come out. Skip to the curses. Um, no, no, that's fine. So what we've got there is that God now qualifies the covenant. He gives a condition. Because now Abraham is in Palestine. He's in Palestine. And as a result of being in Palestine, God qualifies and links it to the land. That God will not just bless his offspring to be numerous, but he will bless the land that they live in based upon their faithfulness. Now, Abraham goes into Egypt and Moses brings them out of Egypt. And we read in Exodus chapter 20. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You will have no other gods before me. 
You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers to the children on the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Stop. Go to Galatians 3. Yep. Now what did we hear here? And you can read the entire chapter. God is incorporating natural law into the covenant. These laws that are in the Old Testament, these ten decalogues, these ten statements, they're not unique to the Old Testament. Everybody knows that you shouldn't steal, that you shouldn't lie, that you shouldn't murder. These are what, the, what Christians call natural law. And God incorporates them with revelatory law i.e. things that you don't know unless God tells you and therefore you know. It is like you should keep the Sabbath, like you shouldn't worship idols. So God now has taken the people of Israel and has qualified again the covenant and has incorporated natural law into the covenant with revelatory law. And so what we see is the development of the covenant system. Are you ready? Yep. Galatians chapter 3. Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law or by hearing with faith, just as Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness? Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham and the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed, along with Abraham, the man of faith. So, what do we see? Paul is saying that Abraham, a Gentile, because he was not an Israelite, but a Gentile was saved by faith. And in the Old Covenant, what is the constant strain? that Israel is called to faithfulness to Yahweh as expressed in the law. And Galatians points out, and Paul's writings point out, that the law demonstrates that man is not of himself a faithful creature. He is unfaithful. And so the Mosaic Covenant, which is a modification to the Abrahamic covenant is demonstrating that human beings will fail to meet God's standards. But he uses a qualification to the covenant. The covenants are changing. Abrahamic, Palestinian, Mosaic. Here's another one, Davidic. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with the people of Israel, did I speak a word to any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus shall you say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel. And I will plant them so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. 
When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom, and he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. There you go. You have another modification to the covenant. The promise is given to David that his offspring shall reign forever. Note the singular. Note the fact that the covenant has been adjusted again. Now we have a Mosaic covenant where a king is established, a king whose reign and whose offspring will reign forever. Forever. So clearly we see that the covenant is being adjusted. New qualifications are being given and old qualifications are being taken away. In the past, judges ruled over the house of Israel, but because of the sinfulness of their heart, God allowed kings to rule over the house of Israel. And so we see the covenants are changing. Some things are being given anew, and some things are being taken away. There we go. Just a bike. So what we see is that there are changes to the covenant. You're in that one, yeah? Jeremiah. Are you ready? Yep. Changes to the covenant. Listen to the next bit. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. What did he say? A new covenant. What's that? A new covenant. Say it again. A new covenant. Keep reading. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to deliver them from the land of Egypt. Not like. Not like. What What did you say? Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers. Did you just say it was like the covenant I that they said made? It was not like the no, covenant. No, you surely you must mean like the covenant. Not, like, not the covenant. like the covenant that he made with Moses. Read on. When I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So, the, the prophets of Israel say that a new covenant is coming, that is not like the Mosaic Covenant. What is the Mosaic Covenant except for keeping the laws of God outwardly? Keeping the temple, the priests and the sacrifices. But it says it won't be like that covenant. It will be like a new covenant in which God writes that law on the human heart. We Christians call this writing the law of God on the human heart the cultivation of virtue because if you cultivate virtue in your life and you are faithful and just and truthful are you going to steal are you going to murder are you going to lie if you are faithful are you going to betray if you are loving are you going to harm and do injustice that is why it says in the New Covenant literature that those who are filled with the Spirit, that those who have the fruits of the Spirit, no law is required. Amen. And that is why we Christians say that our Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. If he fulfilled the law, then the Mosaic law does not need to be followed. Why? Because as the prophets of the Old Testament said, a new covenant, not like the Mosaic covenant. A new one. But what did we see when the Abrahamic covenant was modified in Palestine? And what did we see when the Abrahamic covenant was modified by Moses? We saw that some things were given and some things carried on into the next covenant. And we see this in the Christian faith, that the moral law 
the natural law that God incorporated into the Mosaic Covenant carries on in the New Covenant. But the ritualistic law, the sacrificial law, those laws that separate Israel from the Gentile are done away with. And why are they done away with? So that the Gentile can be grafted onto the branch of Israel and so that the people of God, the descendants of Abraham by faith, can be as numerous as the stars. You ready? Yep. Ezekiel 36. Yep. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord. The nations or nation? The nation. That's, it must mean just Israel. No, the nation. No, you're reading it wrong. It says nation. The nation. No, it's got to say nation. I am the Lord. What nations? The nations. Well, All that's the nations. singular. All the nations. Nations, plural. Plural. So the new covenant is not just for the house of Israel. The new covenant is for what? The nation! The nations! All of plural! Them. All of them! So the new covenant is for all the nations! Amen. So when, for instance, Muslims say that Jesus said, I have only come for the house of Israel, they're lying about what Jesus is teaching. He has come for Israel, but he sends out his apostles to the nations to take the new covenant to the nations. The ends of the earth. So this is why Muslims, this is why Jews, this is why, what are they called? The Hebrew Israelites. Hebrew Israelites. This is why we Christians believe that our Lord Jesus Christ brings a new covenant for everyone. This is why we believe that the new covenant takes from the old and expands upon it. And as it expands upon it, those that, things that were just particular to the Jewish people disappear within the Messianic covenant. They don't disappear because they are not fulfilled. They disappear because Christ fulfills them. He is the one that completes them. And it is by his completion of them that the covenant is for the nations. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Right, I'm going to take a break. Then I'm going to come back and do some more talks. Thanks be to God.